Hi entrepreneurs, welcome to today's live video. Today's live video is all about um, zero accounting review and also the pricing for the year of 2021. So if we are just meeting, hello there, I'm Sharon Tay from NutsAccounting.com and I'm the founder of Nuts Accounting and at Nuts Accounting, we are striving to help entrepreneurs and business owners to use cloud accounting system such as zero accounting like a pro. So at Nuts Accounting, our mission is to help you to do your bookkeeping and to get uh, your books and to get your accounts completed ahead of tax time and also to generate accurate financial reports to help you grow your business faster. So uh, let me know in the comments or in the live chat. Right now we are live at both Facebook and also YouTube. No, Facebook is here, YouTube is here. All right. So um, today we are going live on both platforms. So let us know in the live chat or in the comments do you have any questions about zero accounting or if you need help in choosing the right cloud accounting system for your business, just type it in in the live chat and we will go through it shortly. So today we are going to talk about our... <clears throat> Sorry, today we are going to talk about zero accounting and uh, we are going to have a quick review, a recap of what we have gone through during our this week's weekly video. And before that, let me know in the live chat where are you watching from so that we can have a little ice breaking session. So I'm going to check um, <clears throat> the live chats here. All right, uh, let me see. <coughs> Sorry, I'm having something in my throat today. I don't know why, but my voice is not coming through. But anyway, okay, seems like um, right now there's no chat yet. But anyway, we are going to go through today's video. Today, we are going to go through about zero accounting. If you are a if you are a business owner or entrepreneur and you are currently looking for a good cloud accounting system for your business and you are wondering if um, zero accounting is the right one for you because there's a lot of people that have uh, mentioned about zero accounting around you. Sometimes like you may see it in forums or you may see it uh, or you may hear it from your uh, other peers in the trade that zero accounting is good and zero accounting is uh, popular. So, <clears throat> so if you are uh, wondering if zero accounting is the right one for you, so just uh, type it in in the live chat. What is your question about zero accounting and how we can help you to clear your doubts so that you can move, choose a cloud accounting system and move on and continue on to do your own bookkeeping. So don't waste too much time in choosing a cloud accounting system, although it is very important to choose one that is suitable for your business, but don't spend and don't spend six months to a year just still choosing the cloud accounting system that's right for you. <clears throat> Let me have a drink first, sorry. <clears throat> Okay, I don't know why there's still something in my throat, but anyway, we are going to continue our um, session. Doesn't matter. Okay, so if you are wondering if uh, zero accounting is the right one for you, then let us know in the live chat what is your doubts and we will help you to clear it. All right, so before you choose your, uh, before you choose the cloud accounting system for your business, let me go through what is zero accounting and let me give you a quick tour of what is inside zero accounting and how zero accounting can help you. Okay, so, um, zero accounting. Okay, let me see. I have my notes here in my laptop. So if you see me looking down, that's because I'm checking out the notes. All right. So zero accounting is a cloud accounting system. So in general, all cloud accounting system works the same, just like uh, your Facebook or your Gmail, where all you need to do is just have an internet connection a laptop or a, a laptop or a smartphone with an internet connection so that you can 
uh, browse to the website such as uh, facebook.com so this one will be a uh, zero accounting's website and then all you need to do is just log in with your username and password and you'll be able to access your accounting system so no matter where you are as long as you have internet connection you are able to uh, access to your cloud accounting system and um, no matter which device that you have at the moment, there's no installation required. You don't need to install anything. So you don't need, like right now, uh, during the times of pandemic, I believe there are some parts of the world that's currently in lockdown. So if, if the part of the world that you are in right now is uh, currently in lockdown, then you'll be able to, as long as you have your laptop at home, no matter if your uh, that you usually assess the accounting system in your office, it doesn't matter anymore because you don't need to go back to your office to assess your accounting system. All you need is a laptop with a good internet connection and you'll be able to assess all of your accounting data just like how you use it back in your office. So no worries about that. So this is one of the beautiful features of zero accounting where it is accessible anytime, anywhere, and you don't need to be in a certain physical location or a certain time zone in order to assess all of your accounting data. All right, so this is the first one that it is a cloud accounting system. And the pros, okay, let's talk about the pros of zero accounting. Zero accounting are simple and easy to use, and it has beautiful design that's uh, suitable for, that's easy to use for non-accountants. So even if you do not have any bookkeeping knowledge, you can uh, simply use your zero accounting without any bookkeeping, no, without any bookkeeping knowledge. All you need to do is just Fill in the forms according to the uh, requirements that is say. Like for example, it asks you for a date. So you just fill in the date. It asks you uh, what is the item that you are selling for. Then you fill in the item that you are selling for. So there's no accounting knowledge required. So you don't need to worry about the debits and the credits. All this will be handled in the back end for you. All you need to do is to look at the beautiful zero accounting pages and then fill in the forms accordingly. And zero accounting is expandable with third party apps. So if you have certain uh, functions or uh, like for example, payroll or maybe even a uh, inventory, a more robust inventory system that you need for your business, then all you need to do is go through the zero marketplace to search for all of the um, third party apps that's available that will be able to integrate and flow all of the data into your zero accounting. So this is a very, very good feature and I really love this a lot because you are able to, you know, customize zero accounting according to your own needs. This is the best uh, feature that's available right now that makes zero accounting much more popular compared to other cloud accounting system, especially on the payroll part. So if you have a certain payroll, payroll system according to your local government's requirements and law, so this is different from, for, um, different for different countries. So if your country is in Australia, then there may be another payroll system that is more popular and you can use that payroll system and integrate the, uh, the accounting information to flow into your zero accounting. So no worries about that. As long as it is in the third party app marketplace, the zero marketplace, then you'll be able to flow the data into your zero accounting with just a click of a button. All right, and the next one is the project tracking and billing. Zero projects is one of the most useful feature if you are, if you are handling project based business. For example, if you provide a service to your, to your customers and you charge per project basis, like for example, if you want to see the profit and loss for a certain project, for example, how much you have spent for project uh, customer A. 
So how much you have spent and how much you have charged to the customer, everything can be generated by using the zero projects. So you can easily generate the profit and loss per project basis so that you can easily see how much you have earned or whether you are undercharging this particular customer where you spent more than you charged them in this particular project. So this zero projects is a very good tracking of your projects. It the, it's not only tracking all of your purchases, it's tracking all of your invoices that you tie into the project. And it will also help you to track your time spent on the project as well. So this is especially good for a service-based business. For example, if you are a freelancer and you charge per, per, uh, per your time basis, for example, you charge uh, 30 minutes for uh, $100. So you'll be able to track your time that you have spent for the project, but make sure to click on the start timer so that the timer will start running. And then you have the zero claim, uh, zero expenses. What is zero expenses? Zero expenses is an employee claim system where you'll be able to allow your employee to use your smartphone to capture a picture of the receipt and then submit it to you so that you can review and approve the claims accordingly. So this is a very good feature because it simplifies all the um the normal claims process flow. It makes everything so easy and and one thing about it is when you take a picture of the receipt, when it is still clear, uh, during, when, when the version of the receipt is clear, then you will, you will be able to keep a clear copy of the receipt inside of your zero accounting. So whenever you are being audited, maybe five years later or seven years later, you will still be able to see all the information of the receipt because you have captured a clear copy of the receipt as at when it happens. So, like for example, I do, I think you do understand, uh, when you get a thermal receipt, the, the thermal printed copy of the receipt, it usually fades off like within few months or even within years. Certainly it will fade off and all the writings on the receipt will not be readable anymore. But this is not the same case if you are using zero, uh, zero expenses. You can just capture a clear copy of it and all the time, whenever you need it, maybe seven years later, it will still be as clear as how you have captured it. So isn't that great? So this is to facilitate your audits. So whenever you have any uh, audit, then this one is a good feature for you. So let me know in the comments or in the live chat, what is your questions about zero accounting? And uh, do you have any questions about zero accounting or uh, do you have any doubts whether zero accounting is the right accounting system for you? Type it in in the live chat and we will go through it shortly. So if you are just joining us in our live session, today we are going through about zero accounting. We are going through to, uh, we are going to have a quick review of zero accounting and the price for 2021. And of course, um, we are going to go through some Q&A as well. So type your questions in the live chat and in the comments. Okay, the next uh, pros of zero accounting is zero accounting is has unlimited users for all plans. So if, if you have a lot of, uh, if you have more than two employees or if you have a lot of employees that needs to assess zero accounting at the same time, don't worry about additional costs because zero accounting has everything included into the price for you. So for example, um, I do understand that certain cloud accounting system actually charge you per user login basis. Like uh, other cloud accounting system, they will charge you, uh, I will give you for this price, the basic plan price, you will get two access to the accounting system. And if you need additional access, then you have to pay maybe extra $10 per month, but not for zero accounting. For zero accounting, the price that you have paid is what the price that you are going to pay no matter if you have one user accessing zero accounting or maybe 
10 users. So no matter how many users that's using zero accounting, it's still the same price. And this is a very good value for you if you have a not to say a huge company, but maybe a growing company, or maybe you have plans to grow your business in the future to add in more people into your zero accounting to use it, then you'll be you'll be enjoying this feature. So you have you will have unlimited users for all plans. All right, and another feature of zero accounting is the customer support. All right, um, this can be considered a pros and also a con. Why? It's because uh, zero accounting doesn't offer phone support through, um, they don't offer their customer service through phone support, which means you can't get a phone number and then dial and then say, hi, zero, I have something wrong with my zero accounting. No, you can't do that, unfortunately. But zero accounting do comes with a 24 seven support that's ready for you. So what it means by that is, when, uh, when you need any, add any support from zero accounting, if there's anything happening to your zero accounting, you can always uh, click on the help button inside of your zero accounting and you can type in your questions and you can attach in some of the pictures of the problem that you are trying to describe. And once you submitted this to the customer service, they will get back to you within a uh, certain hours. So usually, I have tried this before and usually I've get a reply within two or three hours from the time that I've sent it. So this is a 24 seven that's around, uh, that's available around the clock. So it doesn't matter which time zone you are because right now we are living in an internet world where time zone is no longer a problem for internet based business. So it's available 24 seven. And as long as you submit your questions, then they will have one of the staff to get back to you shortly. All right. And another uh, pros of zero accounting is multi-currency. So if you are using multi-currency uh, for your business, for example, maybe you are, your business is registered in US and you are try you usually purchase a your products may be from your suppliers that's in Canada and they charge you in Canadian dollars, CAD, then you'll be able to enjoy the multi-currency feature that you can easily record the supplier's bill into your accounting system by uh, recording it in CAD. And zero accounting will automatically convert the CAD into USD for you. So this conversion is a very good feature for non-accountants because it's not so easy to do multi-currency into your accounting system. That's uh, one of the one of the difficult parts of doing accounting if you are doing multi-currency accounting. So no more worries about all this because zero accounting will help you to convert this automatically inside zero accounting. And the best part is, do you know that if you are recording multi-currency, you will need to record the realized and the unrealized currency gain or loss? So what does it mean by that? All right, realized currency gain or loss is when you make payment, um, when the actual payment take place. So what is the, what is the currency um, exchange rate differentiation from the uh, currency exchange rate that have you have used when you record the uh, when you record the invoice so for example when you record the invoice you use the uh, let's say the forex rate that you've used is four to one so maybe four dollars to one dollar so if you if you recorded the exchange rate as four dollars to one dollar during the supplier invoice, and now you are recording the payments, maybe right now the currency rate is uh, maybe four point one to one dollar. So what happens is this is using four point zero and this is using four point one. So you will have the difference of zero point one when you uh, net off these two transactions. So the difference 0 0.1, that's going to be your realized currency gain or loss. So 
Don't worry about all this because Zero Accounting will handle it in the back end for you. Isn't that great? All you need to do is just fill in the payment with the exchange rate of 4.1 and this 0.1 realized uh, currency gain or loss is going to be recorded automatically for you. No additional journals required and you don't need to think about whether do you need to debit or do you need to credit the forex, uh, the realized currency gain or loss? All this, you do not worry. You do not need to worry about it. Everything is handled in the back end for you. Okay. And the best part about zero accounting is it's going to grow with you, along with you, along with your business. So what do I mean by that is, uh, if right now at the moment you are just starting up your business, and you are only a solopreneur. There's only one of you in a business and you don't need, uh, maybe you don't need the zero expenses or maybe you don't have a project basis, uh, um, inventory. Uh, you don't have a project basis right now for your business. So you don't need zero projects. You don't need zero expenses and maybe you don't need zero payroll as well. But maybe five years later or two years later, you have the plan to add in employees, to bring in new employees into your business, to help your business to grow faster. Then at that time, you may want to use the zero expenses to handle the claims system for you. So in, at that moment, you can add on zero expenses as and when you need it. So you can start simple and then slowly add on more feature. Maybe right now you do not need the multi-currency, so you do not need to get the um, pro plan, but maybe right now uh, you are on the standard plan. Later on, maybe three years later, you might want to uh, source for some goods from other countries. Then you'll be able to add in the multi-currency feature by upgrading your plan. So zero accounting can really, really stay with you and be with you from your, from the beginning of your journey, from the starting of your business up to the part where your business is more robust and you need more feature for your business. All right. Um, these are all the pros. Okay. Now let's talk about the cons because this is an honest review from me and no, we do not receive any uh, sponsorship or any brand deals with zero accounting. We are not being paid by zero accounting to do this video. What I'm sharing is with you is based on my experience in using zero accounting and is based on my personal, personal opinion and my honest review about it. So I will be honest with you that it's not all praises for zero accounting only. There are cons as well. So I want you to know about the cons before you make the decision to stick to zero accounting for long term. All right. So the cons of zero accounting we have mentioned just now, there's no customer service phone number. So you cannot be uh, picking up the phone and dialing and dialing uh, your zero accounting and ask them uh, what is the problem with your business, uh, with the accounts in your zero accounting. So no, you cannot do that. Um, all right. Another con is, okay, uh, sorry, I'm lost in my own notes. <laughs> okay. Another con is there's monthly commitment to zero accounting. So if you are just starting your business and maybe budget is something of your concern right now, then zero accounting, you may, you may want to take note that there's a monthly commitment to zero accounting. So no matter, um, which plan that you have choose, it's going to be a monthly cost for your business. Maybe it's the basic plan also is going to be costly for your business if you are just starting out. So do, do, do take note that there is monthly commitment to zero accounting and it's going to be charged to you on a monthly basis. All right. So do take note about it. And apart from that, um, I don't think so. There's much cons about zero accounting because, because zero accounting is so easy to use that, um, even non-accountants or business owners can do their own bookkeeping by using zero accounting. All 
All right. Okay. Um, so let me know in the comments below. Do you have any questions about zero accounting? And um, do you think that zero accounting is suitable for your business? If you are still wondering or doubt or having doubts if zero accounting is the right one for you, just type it in in the live chat and let me know. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, other features that I would like to talk about zero accounting is zero. If no matter if you are service based business or a product based business. Zero accounting is suitable for you. Zero accounting is, uh, they have this online, uh, payment collection, which can, uh, make it easy for your customers to pay you. So if you are issuing invoice to your customer online, you send, send the invoice from zero accounting to them, and then they'll be able to have a button that can click on the button pay now to pay you online. So this is the best feature that I love about zero accounting. It's so convenient that you do not need to, you know, go to your customer and bring your credit card terminal there and ask them to put in their credit card. It's so, um, how to say, it's so inconvenient and also it's, uh, not, not so good in times of pandemic. Because during the times of pandemic, everything is online and everything is so easy because everything is stay, everybody is staying at home and doing things online is way much easier than, you know, the hassle of going to your uh, customer's place uh, physically. So this is one of the feature that you can uh, add into your business to allow you to connect zero accounting with your Stripe go cardless and other online payments to accept credit card, debit card and direct debits. So all of this, uh, you are able to collect uh, the online payments directly to, from your customers inside of your zero accounting. So you don't need to apply additional um, credit card merchants uh, because when you want to collect credit card, you will need to be registered as a credit card merchant with your local bank, um, any of your banks or any of the companies that offer the credit card merchant. So for zero accounting, all you need to do is just register with your Stripe or your Go Cardless and you'll be able to integrate it into your zero accounting. And another one cool feature that other accounting systems does not have it. So far, I do not see any accounting system have it and zero accounting is the only cloud accounting system that has this feature. Want to know what is it? That is the fixed assets management. So zero accounting is the only cloud accounting system that I see right now that handles fixed assets for you. So that means all you need, to, uh, fixed assets uh, is also one of the how to say fixed asset is also one of the most difficult part of doing accounting, especially for non-accountants such as bookkeepers or entrepreneurs that do DIY bookkeeping. Fixed asset is the part that is very, very difficult for you. Why? Because even accountants, uh, even accountants and experienced bookkeepers like me also have trouble in fixed assets uh, calculation of the depreciation. Usually it spends, uh, we spend around half a day, a few hours to calculate all of the fixed assets depreciation for the, for the month in order to record the journal. So don't worry about all this because once you've registered the fixed asset into your zero accounting, all you need to do is just one click of a button and you'll be able to see all the depreciation schedule being generated, how much is the depreciation of each of the item, and once you have checked through that everything is good to go, then all you need to do is just click another button to save it. So this is the coolest feature and the, and the feature that I love the most because it saves me hours in calculating depreciation for all of my assets. So, even even accountants and experienced bookkeepers like me will also enjoy this feature and love this feature. So this is going to be something that you will love as well if you are non-accountants and you are business owner or entrepreneurs. So let me know in the comments 
or in the live chat, what are your questions about zero accounting? Do you have any doubts about uh, choosing zero accounting as your, as your cloud accounting system for your business? Just type it in and then we will uh, go through the Q&A in a while. Okay, um, all right. Other, other features that, uh, that we should talk about, that we should shout about is the optical character recognition, where, um, I'm not sure if you know about this. Well, zero accounting and certain other cloud accounting system do comes with OCR, optical character recognition. What it means by that is when you have an invoice or a receipt, all you need to do is just scan it or take a picture for zero, uh, OCR for zero is uh, zero expenses and zero hub down. So if you're using zero expenses, just use your smartphone, take a picture of your receipt and all the information in the receipt will be extracted out and uh, put in into the correct field for you. For example, the date on that's printed on the receipt it's going to appear in the date column the total amount inclusive tax or exclusive tax and what's the tax amount everything will be pulled out the information will be pulled out from the receipt and then fill in accordingly into your zero accounting this is one of the cool feature that can really helps you to save a lot of time and you do not need to you know manually uh, manually extract the information from the receipt and then fill it in. It's, it's not really time consuming as in you don't really spend two hours in doing that, but it can, as long as anything that can save you time, then we are good about it, right? We like everything that can help us to save more time and save our energy so we can focus our time more on growing our business. And the second OCR that comes with zero is zero hub doc. So zero hub doc, um, it's very easy for you to use. All you need to do is just, um, it can help you to capture your bills and also your receipts as well. So just the same is going to extract all the information and fill it in into your zero accounting for you. All right. And, um, yeah. So these are all of the zero accounting features. And oh yeah, another one is the zero accounting reporting feature. The reporting feature is one of the best because in um, not only you can extract or export the report to PDF format, Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, you can export the report into these three formats. And on top of that, you can customize your reports accordingly. So if you have any, um, <clears throat> If you have any customization that you will need to do to the reporting in order, uh, like for example, maybe you want to compare your profit and loss report by quarters. So quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, then you can do so in zero accounting. You can customize it accordingly. All right. Um, <clears throat> so let me know in the comments below, what is your questions? And we will go through it shortly. So zero accounting, uh, okay, let's talk about the price. For the monthly subscription for US is $11 for early plan, $32, $32 for growing plan, and $62 for established plan. So established plan is the highest plan for uh, US customers. So you'll be able to use multi-currency if you are using the established plan. So the prices for UK is uh, 10 pounds for starter plan, 20, 24 pounds for standard plan, and 30 pounds for premium plan. So if you are a new subscriber to Zero Accounting, you'll be enjoying 30 days of trial period. So you can try Zero for 30 days. And once you have tried Zero for 30 days, then only you need to make a decision whether you want to use Zero Accounting for your business or not. <clears throat> so if you are new to uh, all this and you and you decide to go with zero accounting, do check with us and see if we have any special promotions at at as at the time of your inquiry. All right. Okay. So now we are going to um. Oh yeah. Not to forget. 
Um, we are going to have a free masterclass coming soon. It's going to come real soon. All right. I, I don't think so. I'm supposed to say the date to announce the date, but I, I guess tentatively, most likely it's going to be 21st and 22nd of July. All right. Okay. I've said it already. So, so if you are interested to learn this free masterclass, that's going to be about zero accounting. So <clears throat> go head on over to nutsaccounting.com forward slash zero zero. Nutsaccounting.com forward slash zero zero. So I'm going to type it in in a live chat for you. Nutsaccounting.com forward slash zero zero. All right. So when you go here, you'll be able to <clears throat> go there. And register, uh, register for the VIP waiting list for the uh, Zero Accounting Masterclass. So once we have everything ready for registration, once we open for registration, you'll be the first to know and you'll be the first to register your slots. So head on over to nutscounting.com forward slash zero zero where you will find all the links that we have mentioned, either um, <clears throat> the free accounting, uh, the free online course that we have, which is Master User Academy Level 1 online course to help you to get started in doing bookkeeping for your business. And also you'll be able to register for the VIP waiting list for the free masterclass that's coming up in two weeks time. Yeah. So, um, all right. Uh, Govin asks, is zero accounting popular in Canada? Well, um, I'm not so sure. I don't have the stats to tell you whether it is popular in Canada or not, but zero accounting is a popular choice among business owners and entrepreneurs across the globe. So no matter if you are in US, Canada, Australia, you will find someone in your local place that says that they are using zero accounting. Or maybe you can check out their website and zero accounting will have some stats there. So you'll be able to check if the stats, um, if it is popular in your country. But, uh, I have something that I want to say to you, Govin. Um, all right. Uh, when you, when you use a certain accounting system, do you use the accounting system to enjoy the features or do you want to follow the trend of the current trend of uh, going with the most popular ones? I understand that uh, QuickBooks is also a popular accounting system. It's also a popular choice in US and I believe in Canada as well. So um, for me, when I choose an accounting system, I don't really go with the what's most popular right now. I don't really go with that because this is not like a K-pop. It's not like uh, some entertainment industry where you need to go with what's popular so that you will not be left out. So um, what I see is what I will consider when I choose an accounting system is whether the accounting system has all the features that I need to use, whether the accounting system can really help me in doing my bookkeeping easier, whether the accounting system is uh, easy to use or not. All right. Yeah, I, I have a little rant here and bear with me for a moment. So even if you if you check out the accounting system and it has all these cool features that it keeps telling you that we have this, we have that, and we have also this, and we have also that. So even if there's a lot of features, but if it is not user-friendly, if it is difficult for you to use, there's no point in choosing that accounting system because at the end of the day, you need to learn how to use it if you, at the end of the day, you need to use the, the features in order to enjoy the features. So you are buying, um, you are subscribing to the accounting system for the features that it can help you, for the things that it can provide to you. But in order to enjoy it, you will also need to use it to enjoy it. It's the same for everything. It's just like a course. The course can promise you a lot of things. It can promise you that, oh, within, within 10 weeks, I can help you to become a master user of zero accounting. Well, 
hint, this is our cost, okay? <laughs> so I'm just giving you some example. So if I can promise you that you can become a master user in 10 weeks, but you have to play your part as well. You have to, you have to go through the course with me. You have to learn everything that I teach you and you have to do everything that I told you so that you can enjoy the benefits of the course. So it's the same for your uh, accounting system. You have to use it in order to enjoy the features. So um, make sure one of the most important um, one of the most important consideration when you choose an accounting system is make sure, make sure, make sure that you it is user friendly for you to use, that you know how to use it well to enjoy everything that it can provide for you. Okay, so this is the most important one. So no matter which accounting system that you choose, if it is difficult, like some certain accounting system, they does offer a lot of things. I'm not sure if you have heard about it. Uh, this is not cloud accounting system. This is a, an, a desktop version or a server-based version, which is called SAP. So SAP is a very, very popular choice among um, MNC's companies, multinational companies, among medium to large corporates, uh, corporations. It's a very popular one, but in order to use it, it's very difficult. You need to know a lot of things, not only accounting knowledge, uh, you, you need to have more than accounting knowledge in order to know how to use SAP well, because they have a lot of um, bells and whistles and they have a lot of things that's uh, integrated from here you need to click this and then only the information will flow to this page and then from here then you need to click another thing then only the information can flow to your uh, reporting so the SAP system is a very good one it has a lot of things it can do a lot of things and the MNC's company can have their own uh, programmers to program the SAP and customize it according to, to their own business needs but in order to enjoy all of that you need to have a lot of um, knowledge in terms of not only accounting you have to have a bit of IT knowledge as well <laughs> so it's not so easy so <clears throat> when I choose accounting system, what I want when when you are not an accountant, you are a business owner or entrepreneur, I want you to choose an accounting system that you can uh, when you look at the page, you understand, you easily understand what it is asking you, what it is uh, requesting you for. So you can easily understand what you need to do when you look at the page then only you'll be able to enjoy all of the benefits, all of the features of the accounting system, all right? So zero accounting is one of the best one in terms of uh, user friendliness and also the user interface. So you, may, you can try uh, zero accounting for 30 days and check it out. Don't just take my word for it. Check it out for yourself and see if you like it or not, all right? Okay, um, Okay. let me know in the comments and in the live chat, do you have any questions about zero accounting? If there aren't, then we are going to the uh, Q&A that I have compiled from our previous uh, videos where, okay, uh, <laughs> there are certain, um, there are a lot of comments and questions that came into Nuts Accounting through our previous videos. So we are going, I've picked out a few that can really help you to uh, understand as well so that we can all learn together. So, all right, so let's get started. The first one is a uh, Red Sea at Rose. Okay, um, Red Sea at Rose asks, Hi ma'am, I would like to ask if how to generate a penalty on zero for late payments. All right, uh, Red Sea at Estos, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Red Sea Estos is asking about uh, she wants to charge late payments to her customer. So how can she do so inside zero accounting? Okay, uh, Red Sea, 
you can issue an invoice in zero accounting with the line item that says late payment charges. Okay, and don't forget to choose the correct account for these late payment charges. So uh, issue a, an invoice just like normal and send it to your customer and don't forget to tag it as paid if they have already paid it. All right. Okay. Um, okay. The second question is from, um, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I will try my best. Mungunerdin Soktu. Okay. So uh, Mungunerdin say, Hi Sharon, which storage app is better to keep financial records like invoices, tax reports, pay slips? As you know, we must keep them for five years. Thanks. All right. Um. Okay. <laughs> storage app. Okay. This is one of the exciting topic that I love to talk about. So when you um. Uh, you do understand that uh, you need to keep your record, your accounting record for five years or other countries, it may be more. Like for example, in Malaysia, we, we are obligated to keep our record for seven years. Okay, so just as what we have mentioned just now, certain uh, receipts like thermal paper receipt, it's going to fade off as time goes by. In order to keep a good accounting record for audits, what you need to do is to scan the uh, receipt, scan the documents, all of your accounting documents, no matter it is uh, invoices or, I mean, supplier bills or receipts from your purchases or claims, claims as well. You need to, you need to scan it while it is still clear. All right, because when it is clear and you scan it, the scan copy will be clear as well. So the best way, of course, there are a lot of storage apps, third party apps that's available um, on like, for example, you can use um, the simplest one. You can use Google Drive or you can use OneDrive if you prefer Microsoft products or you may use your own um, accounting, uh, or you may use your own external storage, such, such as hard disk. But the, the simplest way is you need to keep one record inside of your zero accounting. And when you sign up for, and when, and if you are using zero accounting, this comes for free for you. You are able to scan the uh, document and then attach it onto the bookkeeping transaction inside of your zero accounting. For example, right now you are recording, uh, for if you are using, uh, if you are trying to save your receipts, use zero expenses. That is the most straightforward method. But if, as I know, uh, zero expenses comes with additional costs. So if you don't want to pay additional costs, you can create the bank transaction, for example, spend money, and then there's a little button, the file button at the top right corner. So click on that file button and attach the receipt. Uh, you can attach a picture file, a JPEG file, J .jpg, or you can attach as a PDF file. So you can scan the receipt and then save it as a PDF or JPEG and then attach it onto the zero accounting transaction itself. Click on the little file icon at the top right corner and then you can attach this uh, PDF or JPEG file onto the bookkeeping transaction. So for example, if you are facing an audit and the auditor is asking you, uh, I want to see this transaction. Can you show me the supporting document? Then all you need to do is just head into your zero accounting, look for that transaction, and then open up the file that's attached to it. So this is very easy and very convenient for you to search things because there's the search button that you can search. Like for example, you can search um, the amount, <clears throat> the amount of the transaction, or you can also search the uh, description or maybe the name of the supplier depends on how you save it. All right. So you can search easily inside of zero accounting. And, uh, okay. Um, wait, let me have a drink first. So what I want to tell you is the best way to keep your, uh, 
to keep a good record of all of your uh, soft copies is first of all keep one copy inside of your zero accounting transaction the second one is to keep another copy as a pdf copy or image file inside of your own laptop or your own external storage such as external hard disk so why do you need to have two copies well just in case just 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 in case something happened to either one copy you will still have another copy as your backup so always keep two copies at least two copies well, uh, when I was working in KPMG, when I used to work at uh, KPMG, we have this uh, data recovery um, procedure. Yeah, we have this uh, we have this backup plan that <laughs> it's it's going to be extensive. It's going to be crazy, but hear my story and then evaluate what is right for your own uh, business. Okay. They have this uh, crazy thing that they do every day, every single day. So what they did is uh, they program, they program, uh, how to say, they, they use IT, uh, they, they ask the IT department to program a little file, a little execution file that will run at every 6 a.m. in the morning. So uh, 6 a.m. is not going to, there's nobody going to be in the office working. So that is the time where all the accounting transaction and all of the record is kind of like frozen when nobody is touching it and nobody is using it. So every 6 a.m. in the morning, they are, they plug, uh, before we leave the office, we will need to plug in an external hard disk onto the server. So at 6 a.m. in the morning every day, what the, the server, the computer will do is it will save a copy of everything of all the data out from the accounting system. So it will save everything out. Okay, this is not cloud accounting system that we are talking about. This is a desktop version, a server-based version like SAP. Okay, so what they do is they will save a backup copy onto the external hard disk. And then when we come into work at uh, 8 a.m., the backup will be already done. So what we do is, there's, uh, let's call this uh, external hard disk A. So every day, 6 a.m. in the morning is going to save into external hard disk A. And then uh, when our director comes in, she will be bringing, uh, she will take external hard disk A and then she will be bringing back external hard disk B, which is the, uh, which is the backup of the previous day. So she's going to take external hard disk A back to her home at the end of the day while we plug in external hard disk B onto the server or the computer to back up for the next day. And then the following day, she's going to exchange the hard disk as well. So why is it so, um, why the backup system sounds so difficult and sounds so troublesome? It's because in case, anything happen to the uh anything happens to the office like for example let's say a certain fire breakout in the office then external hard disk b that is currently plugged in onto the server uh, the server computer is destroyed by the fire then we will have another copy of the backup uh with our director at her home so so this is this is extreme way of backing up, okay? So that means uh, she, we will always have a copy of the backup. Uh, at the worst case scenario, it's going to be, uh, we will have one day of work uh, destroyed because of the fire, while the external hard disk is, is back up up until yesterday. So if the fire happens today, then we will have the external hard disk up until yesterday. No, two days ago, yeah. So that means whatever that we did yesterday is currently backing up in the office and is destroyed. So what we have is two days ago. So worst come to worst, all we need to do is to do back 
what we have done for yesterday. So this is the best way to back up uh, your data in, in case anything happens. So even if you are using cloud accounting system such as this, then I would suggest that you always, always, always do a backup copy onto your own computer. Like all the invoices that you have issued inside of zero accounting, save it out onto your computer. And uh, when you save it out, don't forget to sort it and organize it so that it is easy for you to find things if there's anything happens and you need to search for something. All right. So um, always save a copy. Uh, right now, in in like like we used to have this kind of external hard disk that we exchange every day. So right now, with the easiness of uh, cloud accounting, uh, easiness of cloud storage, you can save a copy into your cloud storage so that if anything happens to your laptop, you will have the cloud storage uh, accessible anywhere as long as you have an internet as long as you are able to log in. For example, if you are using Google Drive as the backup copy, then you'll be able to access the Google Drive in case if anything happens to your zero accounting or to your computer. Okay, so do take note that you always need to back up more than two copies, at least two copies, yeah. You always need to back up more than one copy. The best is to back up two or three copies, but it depends on your storage um, facilities. So you need to have a good plan on how you can have a backup copy in case the worst case scenario happens. Okay, um, Moon Gunnarden is here with us. Hi, Moon Gunnarden. Okay, uh, my company lend money from owners, then pay back with no interest. It happens so much. Could you please could you please teach me how to record it on zero? Okay, um when your company lend money to the owners. Okay, when comp when your company lend money to the owners, that's going to be a, um, a loan from depends on what you call the owners, loan from directors or loan from business owners. So when you need to consider that just as any other loans. So when, when it comes to accounting, as long as, it's, as long as it is a loan, there's only one treatment to it, which is you need to keep a liab, you need to create a liability account to record the loan amount that you have borrowed. So, um, wait, my company lend money from owners. Yeah. So, if the company is the risk, is the person, not, not person, sorry. If the company is the receiver of the money, which means your business owner loan money to your company or the bank loan money to your company or, um, or another company, for example, your main company, may, maybe you have two companies. One is the main company, one is the uh, sub company. So maybe the main company borrow money to the sub company. So as long as you, this company, this business that you are doing the accounts right now is the receiving money uh, company, then you will need to create a liability account for the company for the company, business owner or person or bank that loan money to you. So you need to create a liability account. So whenever they give, they lend money or borrow money to you, for example, um, they lend money, let's say, let's say your business owner borrows, um, 100,000 to your company in order to help you to, uh, have more cash flow to, to uh, have everything goes through this pandemic, all right? So let's say your business owner borrows 100,000 to your company. So what you need to do is just record a receiving money transaction where you will, of course you will receive the money in your bank account because that's a huge sum. So you are going to record a receiving money in your particular bank account 
uh, record a receive money and then you need to select the liability account which is the loan account that you that you have created for your business owner so when you have recorded that 100000 your balance sheet report will show that you have a liability of 100000 uh, li which means your company is liable to pay this particular business owner for 100000 so when is it going to be paid? We are not sure yet. You can keep it there under the liability account. So whenever you make the payment, then the liability account for that particular business owner will be reducing. For example, let's say you are paying back uh, 1,000, 10,000. Let's say you've paid back 10,000. So now your liability account will show 90,000. Right, because you have reduced by ten thousand. So that is the way that you uh, keep it there. No matter if there's interest or no interest, it's still the same. As long as you borrow money, as long as you get a loan, it's going to show there. And what if you are? What if it's the other way around? Which means your company is borrowing money to your business owner. Then instead of a liability account, you are going to create an asset account, a current asset account. So it's still the same. Whenever you, whenever you borrow money to the business owner or whenever you borrow money to another business, it's going to be recorded under your asset, which means it's something that you will be receiving back soon. Okay. So that's the way to treat your uh, loan. Okay, um, the next question. So don't forget, if you have any question or you want to chat with me, just type it in the live chat. Okay, the next question is from Finn Monorom. Hello, sister. I have problem with the invoice number point because I have delete for one invoice and I cannot renew it by using the previous invoice number. Please give me the tip to solute it. Thanks. Okay, Finn. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, uh, Finn. Finn is asking. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. This is a little, a little awkward. Finn is asking that uh, he or she. I don't know. Finn is the gender. Okay. Finn is asking that. He or she has created customer invoice inside of zero accounting and then he, he or she deleted the invoice. Okay, he created the invoice and it has been tagged with an invoice number. Let's say, for example, it's invoice dash 003032. So it, he has created an invoice and then he deleted the invoice he or she deleted the invoice so when he he or she deleted the invoice he's trying to use back the same invoice number for a new invoice so all right uh finn i'm sorry to tell you that once you have deleted once you have clicked on the void invoice the button says void invoice once you have clicked it which means the invoice is voided and deleted which means the invoice number is deleted as well and you will no longer be able to use back the same invoice number the um what happens is uh, no matter which country you are your local law and regulation should be saying something like this you need to have your invoice numbers in sequence and you should not jump and you should not have um, different sequences for your business. So because of this, that as long as you have issued the invoice out, which means once you have saved the invoice, it is, it is considered as a final and it is considered as uh, something that you have issued out from your business. Once it is considered as something that's final, then you cannot, uh, once you, once you want to cancel off the invoice, it, the invoice number will stick to it. Because you cannot, 
This is to avoid the situation where you have two invoice numbers of the two two invoices to two different customers or maybe different uh, information, but using the same invoice number. That's going to cause a lot of confusion and that is not something that is acceptable by your local law uh, or your local government. It's always not acceptable to have duplicate entries, duplicate invoice numbers, but different information. That is not something that is acceptable. So, be, be, if you really, really want to use back the same invoice number, what I would suggest is don't click on the void or delete button. You just change or edit the information inside of the invoice. But this is very, very dangerous because if more than one of you, if, if your accounting system is used by more than one person, that's going to be problematic because you don't want to be creating an invoice only to know that 10 seconds later, your colleague went in and changed that invoice for her own use. So you don't want that to happen. So always stick to one invoice with one invoice number and try not to change the, the particular invoice number by using it for other customers. So always stick to one invoice number for one customer and one invoice. All right. So um, yeah, you cannot reuse it. You, there's no way for you to retrieve back for that particular invoice number. This is for the audit purpose as well. Okay. Um, the next one. Okay. <laughs> All right. The next question is from someone that, uh, from one of our viewers that I'm very, very sorry that I will not be able to pronounce the name, even if I try to um, translate it by using Google Translate also, it sounds, uh, it sounds not legit to me, so I'm not going to try to pronounce it. So <laughs> the next question is from someone, one of our viewers from Thailand because the name is in Thai language and I can't read Thai language. So even if I translate it, it sounds something silly. So I'm, I'm just going to read your question. You will know who you are. So he or she says, Hi, your video is very helpful. I'm a small business owner trying to do my own accounts. My question is, my questions are, number one, the balance from bank accounts equals to zero account question mark if not match how to fix it okay question two credit note from suppliers i have a problem about this could you show how to reconcile please thank you okay uh, let me rephrase the question so that you will be able to understand what's the question about okay the first question is um she's trying to ask if the uh this this is taken from the bank reconciliation video for zero accounting she's trying to ask is if the bank account uh if the balance shown up yeah <laughs> when you do bank reconciliation in zero accounting there's two balances that's appearing at the top one is um bank bank statements balance Another one is zero accounting's uh, record of the bank balance. So she's trying to ask is if these two balance, if the balances of these two amount does not match, what uh, what is the solution for it? Okay, um, this first question means if it's not matching, that means your bank reconciliation it's not reconciled yet. It's not done yet. You need to do bank reconciliation. So you need to go through all the steps that I have taught you in the bank reconciliation video to find out. You need to go through line by line of your bank statements in order to find out the matching record of the uh, transaction inside of your zero accounting that you have recorded. So go through line by line and find the match of it inside of your zero accounting transaction and then match it with your bank statements transaction. 
um, yeah. And if if you have already completed all of your bank statements, uh, bank statement transaction, and you are still having problem that it is not balancing, it is not the same. Then you need to investigate further. Are there any duplicate transactions that you have recorded more than once? So, for example, if you if you really legitly has the transaction inside of your bank statement, but maybe sometimes you accidentally recorded more than one copy inside of your zero accounting, that's going to cause a problem for you. You will need to investigate if there are any duplicate transactions. If there are, delete it. And um, but before you delete, do 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 check and ensure that it is something that you really want to delete before you delete anything from your system. And the second one is um, are there any missing transaction? For example, uh, the transaction appears in your bank statement, but it's not appearing in your zero accounting. So that means you. It is a missing transaction that you have not yet recorded in your zero accounting. So you need to find these transactions and record it into your zero accounting. And um, are there any transactions that you have recorded that you do record it, uh, you, you did record it already into your zero accounting, just that it may be with a wrong amount or wrong date or even the wrong bank account. Sometimes that may happen. So you want to check and search through all of your transactions inside of zero accounting, search for the amount, search for the dates, search for the different bank account transactions, and see if you are able to find back this particular transaction for your bank reconciliation. If it's still not matching, and you, you do know that what you have recorded in your zero accounting is correct and accurate. That means it's an unreconciled item that is yet to appear in your bank statement. So for example, um, you may have issued out a check to your uh, supplier, maybe at the end of the month, like for example, uh, 31st of July. Then you know that the check has been banked in or deposited on let's say 2nd of August. So that particular transaction will only appear in August. So it's up to you whether you want to keep that transaction in the, uh, with the date of 31st of July or you can change it to August. Mm. All right. Um, the second question from uh, our Thai viewer is, credit note from suppliers, I have a problem about this. Could you show how to reconcile please? Okay. Uh, he or she has uh, recorded some credit notes from her, his or her supplier. Okay, it sounds silly to say both gender. Okay, so uh, the supplier's credit note has already been recorded inside zero accounting, but it's it's uh, left hanging there because once you have recorded it, you do not do anything about it. So it will forever stay there, right? So if you have recorded a credit note from your supplier, um, you can allocate the, the credit note to your, un to your unpaid bills. So if you have any bills from your supplier that is uh, yet to make payment, and you would like to offset the credit note with the invoices or with the supplier bills, you can do so, offset it inside of your zero accounting, but do, do, do take note that you need to inform your supplier that you have used the credit note amount onto the bill so that your supplier can update their record as well. If not, the, your supplier will be uh, asking you for payment for that particular invoice. Okay. The next question is from Rab Sub. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly. R A B D S A B D Rab Sub. Okay. Hi. Thanks a lot for the easier bank reconciliation tutorial. Could you please tell me how to remove the bank transaction after uploading into zero? Waiting for your reply. Hi Rab Sub. Okay. Um. The question is, Rab Sub has uploaded a 
Rubsub has uploaded the bank statement transactions into zero accounting, but right now he wants to remove the bank transactions that he has uploaded from zero accounting. He wants to kind of like remove it or delete it or undo it. Okay, um, for this question, in your zero accounting under your in the bank bank account page, go to the bank transactions tab. And then in the bank transactions tab, it's that's the list of all the bank transactions that you have uploaded into your zero accounting. You can uh, remove the transactions from there. So all you need to do is just check, check, check the transactions that you want to remove and then just click on the button to remove it or delete it. But it will, even if you have removed it or delete it, the line item will still be showing there. It's just that it says uh, it's deleted or removed. So it will still be there, but it's not going to appear in your bank reconciliation anymore. Okay. And uh, don't forget, uh, before you remove anything or delete anything, make sure, make sure, make sure that it is really something that you want to remove or delete from the accounting system. Because once you remove it, there's no way for you to turn back and put it back unless you upload it again. And um, when you remove it, when you remove the transaction, don't forget, because this is a bank transactions that you are trying to remove right now, don't forget to check the closing balance to ensure that your bank statement is still correct after you have removed it, okay? All right, okay. The next question is from Marivel Suarez. Okay, Marivel say, Hi, Miss Sharon, could you teach how to handle reconciling items pertaining to prior years, say outstanding checks, unbook transactions, deposit in transit each. If the zero user has set a lock date, I understand one cannot reconcile or create any transactions dated before the lock date. Okay, uh, Marivel. Okay, let me repeat the question. Marivel is trying to ask uh, how to handle reconciliation reconciling items pertaining to prior years. Okay, Marivelle is asking, she has some outstanding items from the prior years, like for example, outstanding checks or unbooked transactions or deposits in transit. So um, she has the, uh, she thinks that the zero, she thinks that once the zero accounting has already set a lock date, she cannot reconcile or create any transactions dated before the lock date. Okay, um, Marivel, first of all, you can reconcile a prior year's item. So this is, this is for sure that you can reconcile the prior year's uh, items. No matter when the item is, when, no matter when the item happens, you can still record it into zero accounting and reconcile it. But your problem right now is the zero accounting has been locked by your admin user or a super user of your zero accounting. So you need to talk to the person that's holding the uh, admin user or the super user to unlock it because you want to add in these unreconciled items. So, um, okay, let me get something clear with you first. Unreconciled items for prior years should only be done when you are trying to set up and when you are when you are doing the full setup and migration of your accounts from your previous accounting software into your zero accounting when you're trying to migrate into zero accounting you will do the full setup and migration which includes to uh, record all of these unreconciled and outstanding items into your zero accounting as at the point of your uh, migration so if during the migration, you still have maybe 10 items unreconciled, still pending for reconciliation, during that time when you migrate, then you will need to create it inside of your zero accounting. So 
Yes, of course, you need to have the log date open so that you can rec you can record it because if it is the the point of having the log date set is to log the account so that nobody can make any changes. For example, if I have did the full setup and migration as at let's say um 31st of December. If I have done everything and I have checked and ensure that all of the transactions are correct and the balance is correct, the trial balance is correct, then I do not want any anyone to do anything to it that will cause it to go wrong. So if it is correct already, I don't want anybody to be touching it to make it go wrong. So that is the purpose of having the log date is to log everything so that nobody can make changes to it. So if, if your super user or your admin have already set the log date, that means he or she has already ensured that the balance is correct and he or she do, do not want other people to make changes to it. You will need to check with the super user or the admin user, check with them and ask them about all these outstanding items. Maybe the outstanding items has or have already been reconciled in the subsequent month and you are not sure about it. You may want to check with your super user about it. All right. So every time before you make any transaction, you create any transaction, have a quick search in your zero accounting before you record it to avoid duplicate transactions. So you need to, um, you need to search first whether whether that has already been recorded and already been reconciled, that's why it's not appearing anymore. And also you need to check with your super user or your admin uh, about the log date and about these uh, unreconciled items, whether they have taken in or not. And if, 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 if everything is really, really uh, not recorded yet, then you can ask the super user or the admin, which I suspect is your accountant or your bookkeeper. You can ask them whether it is right for you to record this unreconciled transaction and then reconcile it. Is this the right way to do? Check with your accountant or your bookkeeper for this. All right. And the last question that we have for today is from Gaylin. Gaylin. Galen asks, what about invoicing from an existing PO from clients if you capture their PO? Okay, uh, Galen, if you have record, if your customer provides you a PO, PO which means it's a purchase order. If your customer did provides you with a purchase order and you have recorded it into your, uh, into your zero accounting as a quote, a customer quote, then if you have recorded it as a quote, you can easily convert the quote into an invoice. All you need to do is search the quote inside of your zero accounting. And then at the top right corner, there's a button that says create invoice. So click on that button and everything, every information from your quote will be automatically generated as an invoice for you. This is very convenient, is super convenient and super useful for you to create an invoice easily directly from a quote where you do not need to spend time in um, retyping all of the information into your invoice. So this is a very easy way to create an invoice. So do take note to make good use of this feature of zero accounting. Okay, um, we have gone through all of the questions for today. So let me know in the live chat if you still have other questions. And if uh, let me know in the live chat if you still have any other questions about zero accounting and we will go through it together. So uh, before we end today's live stream, I just want to have a quick chat with you about our upcoming uh, free masterclass for zero accounting business user. So if you are a business user, sorry, if you are a business owner or entrepreneur using zero accounting and you would like to learn more about how to do, uh, how to complete your accounts ahead of tax time, so do join us for the free master
masterclass that's happening in July, um, on July 21st and 22nd. That's the date that we are going to have our free masterclass. So if you want to learn more about the free masterclass and be the first to know when the free masterclass uh, registration is open, so head on over to nutsaccounting.com forward slash zero zero and we will be uh, letting you know whenever it's ready and uh, when, when the registration is open. So let me know. Uh, Fill in the form so that you can be in the VIP waiting list so that I can personally inform you when it is open for registration. So the free masterclass, uh, we are going to talk about, in the free masterclass, we are going to talk about how to uh, complete your accounts ahead of tax time. And also I'm going to teach you uh, how to make sure that your accounts are correct are completed correctly without any problems, without any mistakes or any problems. So do join us for the free masterclass that's going to happen in uh, on 21st July and 22nd July, um, Malaysia time. Yeah, I, I, I would like to add this a Malaysia time. So we are going to have two different sessions. I understand that time zone is a problem for, for different, different countries globally because we have we have audience from, from everywhere in the world. So we are going to have two different time slots for the free masterclass. One is going to be uh, around this time. One is going to be around this time for the US uh, time zones and also the Australian time zone. While another session, we are going to have it in the evening of Malaysia time, which is roughly around uh, 6, 4... It's uh, 10 hours apart. So the second, second masterclass that's going